Good morning. <clears throat> How are you guys today? So I'm only going to be streaming live on YouTube from now on. Um, just to make... Uh, Facebook is making some changes to their video recordings. And so... I am going to just be streaming again on YouTube starting this month. This Hostess Club card um, set is from January, February. And in February, we created this cute little um, ice cream card, make a wish. It can be a wish about anything, but probably a birthday card. And then... A cute little tag using the dies um, that you could attach to a gift. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start off first today um, using <clears throat> some scraps. So this background was created using all of those white scraps of paper that everybody has laying around you know we always end up when we're trimming paper with all these white strips so let's go ahead and get started using this card so i'm going to bring out my paper trimmer today and i'm going to grab some white strips from my scrap bin you know we all have tons of white strips and i'm just going to cut you know, you might already have some of different widths and all of that. So I'm just going to just cut some randomly uh, with no specific size. Just so that I have a few different size selections here. And this technique would work great with any color of cardstock, not just white. Um, today I happen to be featuring just white, but you know, if you're trimming down strips of paper and these strips are, you know, you cut a quarter inch off here and a quarter inch off there. These strips are also, you know, you can make rainbows with them. You could color them with, you know, you could ink blend on them with a marker or, you know, with your inks, or you could color the strip in with the marker to have them custom colored, like if you were trying to do a rainbow. Um, you know, you, the possibilities are really endless here. The only thing I'm trying to do is make sure my strips are straight, uh, you know, straight as possible, since I am just cutting random strips. Okay, I think that's probably enough for our card today. I'll go ahead and set my trimmer to the side, and I'm going to bring in my silicone mat. And my white card base. Now, here again, it doesn't have to be white. Mine just happens to be a white on white. Sorry, I have a little bit of a chest cold, so I'm trying to take in lots of fluids to try and get that to go away. Now, in my sample, I did my stripes kind of at a diagonal. Again, that is not required like you could do any shape you could have as many strips or as few strips as you would like for my video today I'm going to change it up and I am going to do strips that go kind of all over the place okay just to show that they don't have to be all one direction also, this would have been a great place to use um, some the self-adhesive. Uh, what are they called here? Let me grab them. You know, I didn't, adhesive sheets, you know, stamping up sells these adhesive sheets. And you could definitely put this on the back of your cardstock and just randomly cut a bunch of strips. Or you could lay your strips into the adhesive and then they would be sticky backed for you okay now i've gone three diagonal this way okay now i'm gonna take and i'm gonna just do kind of where they meet up there oh you know i didn't even put glue at that end did i 
Okay, and they can go over. Let's have them just go over. Okay. Just random strips. Now, if you don't have your notifications on for YouTube and you haven't subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button and the little bell so you'll be notified every time I go live or every time I post a video. Oh, I did not put enough adhesive all the way to the end. So, so you know, and that's why I'm working on my silicone mat so that I can make sure I go all the way to the end. And if I go off the paper, that's okay. And now I'm just applying glue to the strip. And then I'm going to put a diagonal one there. You know, and you could actually take the time and weave these if you wanted. I'm obviously not going to take the time to weave today. But definitely an idea. I'm going to rotate my mat so I can fill in this area up here. Not going to take the time to weave, but, you know, obviously that would be a very uh, fun technique to do as well when you're just using, you know, all these random strips. And it's okay that they go off and they're cattywampus or, you know, because most of the background will be covered with that very large ice cream cone. All right, and then I think I'm going to put a couple strips on this corner just because. Make it a little balanced. There's that one, but I think I want one of the wider pieces, so I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut this piece off here, and hopefully that piece would be big enough. There we go. Just like that. And then I'm going to take one more skinny piece and have it go just right there. Okay. Now, if you get adhesive, you know, depending on what kind of adhesive you use, I am using a fine tip nozzle, art glitter glue. That's my go-to. Um, but if you're using like a tape runner or the Stampin' Up! tape runner you could always you know use your adhesive eraser to glue any you know remove any eraser now you might notice that you have cut lines and you know when you're cutting on a trimmer you get kind of some edges get pushed up and if you know when you when you slide down the blade pushes the paper down into the indent and so if you have some of those that you feel are backward if you just take your bone folder over those edges it smooths them right down and gives them that nice finished look that you're looking for. So, you know, if you die cut something backwards or you stamped on a die cut backwards, if you just take your bone folder and just run it along those edges, that gives them those nice, clean, finished edges that you're looking for. Okay, so just a little tip there. Now I'm going to take my large scissors. And I'm going to just trim off, flip it over, and I'm just going to trim off the edges. Um, I'm probably going to take this also into my um, small guillotine trimmer, just because that'll give me nice clean edges. This piece isn't glued down entirely, so I'm just going to add some glue there and hold it down for just a second. There we are. So, gonna get all rid of all these scraps. Now, clearly there are plenty of scraps here that can be used for another card, but I have so many white strips that I'm just gonna throw those away. And I'm gonna set my silicone mat to the side and I'm gonna grab my smaller guillotine trimmer. Now, I do not have the Stampin' Up! one. This one is by Tim Holtz. And for the first edge, just to make sure it's straight, I'm just going to kind of hold my finger 
along the edge of the blade. And I can see I have a couple little pieces that are sticking over the edge. So I'm just going to lightly trim those off. Now I can hold it up against the top to have that straight edge. And I'm really just taking my white paper to the blade edge there. And you can hear that, you know, I had a couple extra thicknesses sticking out. So it took a little bit more pressure to get those to cut off. But there we are. And, I, you know, I cut pretty close anyway. So there's not a lot that this is taking off. But at least it gives me that nice, clean, crisp edge that I am looking for. All right. So I hope everybody is having a great Sunday. There is my background. And while I have that out, I'm going to take my card base and my Berry Burst card stock here. And I am going to get this assembled. And it will look just like that once I get it all glued down. So my card base is already scored. And just a fun tip. Oh, that is out of focus. Let's see if I can bring that back. Hmm. There we go. Now it's coming back into focus. Wow. All right, so you can see my score line. If you fold the indent out, I believe it is, and you get that ridge on the inside, you don't get that cracking of the cardstock. Okay, go ahead and do that with my bone folder. And another way, you know, you have the inside of the card, and I didn't think of this at the time. However, you could certainly add a couple white strips and trim them down just so that the inside of the card matches the outside of the card. I really do enjoy making the inside of my card and my uh, cards match. So I'm going to take some glue here. And I'm going to put plenty of glue on here. And I'm going to glue this to my berry burst. Now the berry burst measures five and a half by four and a quarter. And my white panel that I created measures four by five and a quarter. And now I'm going to take and I'm going to glue this down. Now I am working on a magnetic glass mat. And it is from Glassboard Studios. And let me tell you, it is amazing. Okay. Um, you can buy special magnets. Now, not all magnets work, but just to hold this down so I don't have to, I'm going to just take my magnets and hold it down and let that glue set up. Now, you can see at the top of my card here, I have a little white edge. As soon as that's dry, I will take care of that and I will uh, just trim that off with my guillotine trimmer. So I'm going to just move my card panel off to the side, let it dry, and I am going to bring in my pieces and stamps to create my um, ice cream cone. All right, so what I did with the ice cream cone is I took the dies and I created myself a little stencil. Okay, so this is just um, stencil plastic that I, I think I actually even got it off Timu. Comes in 12 by 12 sheets. So here is my mat that I like to do my stenciling on. You take off both sides and it will stick to your surface so you don't have to worry about it moving. I'm going to actually move that over so it's more centered for you. And then I am going to first, here is my bubble bath. This is bubble bath cardstock. And I am going to stamp my ice cream cone or my ice cream top, I'm sorry, using that Stamp, and I'm going to grab a big block here. And I'm going to use my Berry Burst ink. 
Now, I think I have it on the table because we are using it again this month. All right, so here is my Berry Burst ink. Now the die is intended for you to cut like a layer, um, like a different colored cardstock layer on top. However, I wanted to do some ink blending and so I sponged, okay? There we are. Ooh, that was not good. Sorry about that. I had a little tray of all these like little mini hearts and random bling, you know, when you're crafting. So that was here on my desk and it literally just spilled everywhere. So we're gonna take a brief second and clean that up. Sorry about that. Hopefully I can get most of it to just go off my glass mat into the tray so it won't take me too incredibly long to get that cleaned up. There we are. All right. And if so, as some of you may remember, I switched to using a flour sack towel to clean my stamps. So usually it can be dry. Usually I use it dry. But if it's like a dark color like this and you feel like it's having a hard time coming off, you can just spray your stamp cleaner or a little bit of water and it will come right off. I don't know where my stamp cleaner spray is, so I'm just going to use my a little bit of water. Okay, the best thing about this is number one, it's an old flour sack towel that has been used multiple times. You don't want to use a brand new one. You want it have it washed so it gets all that lint off first um i got mine from my daughter she makes uh sourdough bread and when her flour sack towels get a little worn out she hands them down to me so this is just a piece i'll use it till i can't handle it anymore and then i'll throw it away but it it's like a second life and it does not create any trash so we like that okay all right so now i have my stencil that I created using that um, die. And I'm just going to stick this onto my silicone mat here. Okay, this is the same. This is a, the stamp wheel. It's just a acrylic mat from the stamp wheel. I don't own the stamp wheel. I just bought the mat just for this purpose because I'm able to press down my templates, any stencils that you have. It holds down awesome. Now here is the piece. This piece actually cuts out of your die when you dye it. So this would be the piece that you would take and cut out of another color cardstock and lay it over the top of your ice cream cone. You know, and so I am using the other space would be here, right? Um, so we're gonna actually have our colors in a different location. There we are, so I'm gonna just, and I have put some pixie spray on the back of this so it's a little sticky. If you don't have pixie spray, but you have our Tombo, the green bottle glue, whatever it is, Tombo Mono Adhesive Glue, if you lightly put that glue on and kind of let it dry, it becomes temporary, like a sticky note, much like the Pixie Spray. And now I'm just gonna set this right inside. Like I said, it is sticky, so it will hold down. Okay, I'm gonna give it a good press here. Okay, there we are. And then I'm gonna just take my Berry Burst ink and I'm gonna tap it here. And the nice thing when you tap it onto your stencil, you can still use that ink. Or if you have a glass mat and you tap on here, it, that paper's not absorbing the ink, so you could always pick it right back up and use it. So having a glass mat or tapping off on your stencil is a great way to make sure that you're getting the most for your money and using all of that ink now. 
I, my little um, lines have been a little bent. These like little pieces here that go in between. So I am using my finger to hold them down a little bit just for added support. Okay, blend it. You can make it a little darker on one side. I'm gonna do that just so I get create some depth and then I'm gonna do a little darker on this side here just to create that depth and maybe just a little here on the bottom. All right, there we are. And we are done with that. And then, of course, you know, my flower sack towel. Wipe off all this extra ink so that I don't get ink everywhere or, you know, it's perfect. Okay, so then I can take my towel and wipe that off. Now, when I have this completely off my paper, I will use just a little spritz of alcohol and clean my stencil. Now, because I created this stencil and it's not one I bought, I will store it inside or with my stamp set. Okay. I might have to trim it down just a hair so it will fit inside the case, but that way I'll always have it and I won't have to recreate it. Um, if you don't have the stencil stuff, you could always use just like a piece of paper. All right, so there we have our ice cream cone, or ice cream, I should say. And I am going to die cut this off screen. And there we are. So there is the ice cream part. Now I have already stamped and die cut out my ice cream cone, but I would like to add a little bit of color. So I'm going to grab my brown ink blending brush and I'm going to grab my pecan pie. So I stamped this tone on tone using pecan pie cardstock and pecan pie ink. And now I'm going to just take a second and I'm just going to do a little ink blending around the edges just to give it that ice cream cone a little depth and dimension so it's not so flat. All right, there we go. So that's it. Again, you can also take stamp cleaner or a baby wipe or water to wash off your mat here. I'm going to just spray with some water. And there we go. So you can tell my stamp mat is well loved and then you just take your two pieces of plastic when you're not using it and just put them right over the top otherwise if you don't do that wherever you lay this things will stick to it and you don't want that all right so i've already pre-stamped and cut out my sentiment so now we're going to take our card base and this is something that really needs to be built on the card because you don't want your ice cream cone to be too tall. Okay, you want your ice cream cone to stay on the size of the card. All right, so I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna start from my ice cream cone, and I'm gonna set it down at the bottom, and you notice I'm setting it off to the right-hand side. Okay, then I'm gonna take my ice cream cone, or ice cream, I keep saying cone, and it's the ice cream top. And I am going to put it down far enough so it stays on the white paper, okay? Now I'll hold that down for a second. Grab my magnets to hold that down for a second while I work on my sentiment. So my circle is about a two inch circle, and my scallop is just slightly bigger so that it is a nice, small border but just enough to pop it up there we go and then I'm going to take my dimensionals I happen to have many dimensionals sitting here so well we'll just use them so I'm going to just take my piercing tool one of many that I have sitting on my desk because you know why why only have one piercing tool when you can have five right Here's my piercing tools, all in this little thing right here. So yeah, I have a lot. And you know, sometimes none of them are in there and they're somewhere on my desk. All right, so that should be plenty. They're mini, so add a few extra. 
And it, you know, these dimensionals are wonderful to use. Um, if you're in an area where you find that anything you stick on with dimensionals tends to fall off, just take before gluing them down. You know, we've all made cards. If you've been in the card making or even scrapbooking for that matter, and you use just regular tape, and that's one reason I slit, I switched to a uh, liquid glue primarily for card making is because I find that they don't fall apart. Okay, so I kind of put my cone a little too far over to the right and I don't want to cover it up. So I'm going to move my sentiment over to the left for this card. Um, you'll notice it was on the right for this card, but here we are, you know, we're just going to make it work as we go. All right, so there's that. Now, let me see if I can find my twine. I don't have it here. So at this point, who knows where it is? You might get just something random. Let me go look on my table real quick. It was not there. So I'm just going to see if I got some random twine here. Oh, look, there it is. It was in my twine bucket. So here we are. Now, this is just some random pink twine. I don't know who made it, but I'm going to take a, a good chunk here. And I'm going to trim it here like so. And I like a double twine bow. I think that, you know, twine is so thin that when you double it up, it just gives it some more body and life. So here we are. There we go. And I'm going to trim off my excess just like that. And we're going to stick that on there. Oh, that pink is just a little bit different than the other one, but pink is pink at this point, right? I'm going to take a glue dot. These are big ones. My little ones must be over on my other table. That's okay. We'll just stick it on a glue dot and then we'll ooh, kind of pinch that glue dot so it's not so big and so it all fits behind the bow. And I'm going to do it on this side just like that. There we are. And now I'm going to grab my rhinestones and we're going to finish this card up. Maybe I'm gonna grab my rhinestones. Oh, I will just grab from my stash here. I should have just plain old basic rhinestones in here if I haven't moved the envelope somewhere. Oh, there's a pack, there we go. You know, one thing, you know, if you have five more dollars to spend or whatever, using these rhinestone basic jewels sure do add so much to your card. And I did four, it looks like. So we're going to do a big one. Ooh, where'd that go? Oh, here it is. And I pick up my rhinestones with my piercing tool. I'm going to do five. There we are. I feel like maybe I should move this one over here and this one over here. And then this little tiny one over here, over here, just so it's a little more balanced. It didn't feel balanced. All right. So that is our first card. And now that everything's dry, I should be able to trim off that little bit of white at the top so just bring in your paper cutter and 
There we go. A little bit more. If you don't have a paper trimmer like this, you could certainly use your 12 inch one. You just open it up and trim it off that way. And there is our first card. So both versions, I love them. This ice cream set was so cute. All right, our next card is actually going to be a tag. And I'm going to grab my markers that I used for this. I have saved them right here in a little coffee cup. All right, so let's go ahead and grab some pieces here. Um, here is what the die cut actually looks like. And then I also have, and this is what the tag looks like when you cut it, and it has a little score mark there. I'm going to go ahead and fold that over and grab my bone folder. Now, I am one that loves to add a little color and dimension to my die cuts. So I'm going to bring back my mat here. I'm only going to take off one side because... Well, just because. All right, so I'm going to lay this here, and I'm going to take my pecan pie ink, and I'm just going to lightly go around the edges of my ice cream cone. Now, the die is separate. Now, you don't have to put the... So you see that it has some cuts and stuff in it. The actual die... Let me bring it over here. Looks like this, okay? And then this piece, you just can die cut it with it. You know, you just tape it down, line it up, and that's what gives you your detail. Um, but if you don't want that, you don't have to use it. And when I die cut the ice cream cones, I actually... Stamped the ice cream cone here, and then I just lined up the die and cut it out. Okay, so that's how we die cut the ice cream cones for the other card. All right, so here we are. I'm going to put that back in here and close that up. Okay, we are done with the brown. And then I took some Daffodil Delight, and that is also another color we're using for this month. I do want to clean my mat before I um, bring in the yellow because I don't want brown getting on to my ice cream cone. I'm going to stick that down, and I'm going to go grab my Daffodil Delight. All right, here we are. Got a little green ink on the side of my pad. I'm just going to spray that off. It is water soluble. Okay. Now, this back piece is Daffodil Delight, and I cut this ice cream layer in Lemon Lolly. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of ink around the edges just to give it a little more you know, so it's not so flat. All right, there we are. That is it. So I'm going to take, and then I always, you know, wipe off any excess ink on my towel here. All right. Peel this off. Give my mat a little spray. And when I'm crafting, I normally just keep it out next to next to me at all times so all right so we are going to take first we're going to glue our ice cream cone now i'm just going to put little dots on those tiny little pieces here we are bring in my silicone mat and there we go there we are all right, now I'm going to take my ice cream cone 
and I'm just gonna line it up right there. So I'm just gonna put glue along the top of my ice cream cone. Ooh. Just like that. Set that down. We'll set that on there to hold it and we'll move it, slide it out. Okay. So first we're gonna take the Celebrate and we're gonna get that ready. Now I have die cut this twice. Now this Celebrate happens to be uh, my favorite thing, Celebrate, because I did not have the one that we have in the catalog. Oh, that is missing. It's a good thing I have an extra one right here. All right, here we go. We'll take that. So I cut Celebrate out of white and Pool Party. And I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna layer it right underneath. Okay, and on the pool party layer, I actually put our adhesive strips on the back so that I didn't have to worry about glue. So I'm gonna first, I'm gonna peel out all these light little bits that are still stuck inside my Celebrate. All right, and then do the same thing with the white layer. Now you have two choices here. You can um, offset your Celebrate so it looks like a shadow layer, or you can line it up evenly. And the reason I did this is just to give have it be a little more sturdy. I did use 110 pound weight white cardstock so that it would be a little more sturdy because your Celebrate does um, hang off the edge. So here on this particular one, I had to use, well, I must have had two different, like I die cut right at the split of the adhesive sheet. So I have a different piece at the top. So it's gonna take me a little longer to pick those off, but that's okay. Just using my piercing tool, get it gets under there and Peels it off, there we are. Um, this makes it easier than you don't have to do liquid glue, but if you prefer liquid glue, that is certainly up to you. I just love the convenience of the adhesive sheet because then I don't have the glue oozing out everywhere and it goes all the way to the tip. You know, the tips of the lines versus, you know, when you do glue, you don't always get all the way to the tip of the line or the tip of the die cut. So, or on these super fine areas. All right, so here we are. We have all of that backing off. Go ahead and throw that away. Whew. I'm gonna set my, and I'm gonna just set my white here on top of my silicone mat. And then using my tweezers, I'm gonna just hold my Celebrate with my tweezers. And I'm just gonna work on one letter at a time. So, look at my C, get it lined up. Then my E, there's my L. You know, this does take a little bit of a second because this font is so fine. But I tend to back all of my sentiments, die cut sentiments, at least two or three times. It is a lot easier to die cut two or three times than to put foam tape and try and pop it up if you want to give it dimension. So just a little tip there if you are wanting to get, and I'm just literally working on one letter at a time. Um, you don't want to get in a hurry because you'll offset it. And they do line up pretty easily one letter at a time. Okay, so there we are. And I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to set my magnets on top just so, and I have a square magnet here. I actually got these at North 40. And just to give it some time to stick real good. All right, now I have already pre-stamped my straw and my strawberry. So I'm gonna use cherry cobbler for my cherry. 
light and dark. I am using sweet sorbet for my strawberry. I do have light and dark shaded spruce out here, but I believe I only use the dark. And then I have light and dark Tahitian Tide for the straw. So when I'm coloring small images like this, I like to tend to use the bullet tip. Um, just because I have a little more control. Okay, so I'm going to go here into my darker areas and right around the straw or the stem. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to take my light and I'm going to just do small circles over that little border. So as to blend that line out. And there we go. There is my cherry. I'm going to take my dark green again, just using the bullet tip. These are very small images. And while I have the green out, I'm going to come over and I'll do some dark at the bottom of the strawberry leaves. And since I have the light out, I'll do, ooh. Well, that was weird. There we go. My marker came apart. Let's stick it back together. There we are. And then I'll just add a little light to the tips of the leaves. There we go. All right. Next up, I'm going to color my strawberry. All this talking makes my throat dry. I'm going to, so this line represents to me the bottom of the strawberry. So I'm going to take my dark sweet sorbet, color that in again using the bullet tip. When you use the fine tip, you really need to use the side because you don't want to ruin that nice tip, okay? So I, I use kind of the side of it so you don't ruin that tip. All right, I'm going to go back in with my dark sweet, so, uh, sweet sorbet just to make this bottom a little darker. And that's it. All right, and then finally, I am going to color my straw with the dark Tahitian Tide on the right side. And I'm skipping that little skinny line and I'm just going to leave that white, okay? So just taking my dark down that one edge and now and using the bullet tip, I'm going to take my light and I'm going to go in small circles over that line so that to blend that harsh line out, we don't want that. And then I'll just take and fill in the rest. Um, one thing with Stampin' Blends, they do like to have a little bit of dry time in between. So, and if you uh, don't give them enough dry time in between the layers of ink, they tend to bleed and bleed out of your image. Okay. So I'm going to grab my mini cut and emboss machine. Let me grab my plates here and my dies. So I need my straw, my cherry, and my, and also I wanted to show you the dies, okay? So you could also make a cupcake. So here's a little cupcake wrapper. Um, here's the die for the donut and it does cut the center of the donut out. And then there are also sprinkles that you can add on top of your Ice cream cone. All right, so I'm going to set this here. And I have found that I absolutely love scotch removable tape. Okay, so it comes like this. I got it on Amazon. It doesn't tear your um, paper. It doesn't. Like it is really good. It's like a sticky note, okay? I have, I bought two rolls. I thought it was kind of pricey, but I have literally been using the one roll for four months now and have not run out. So, all right, I'm gonna line these up. Okay, just like so. And I'm gonna tape them down because I'm gonna cut all three of these out at the exact same time. 
All right, just like this. And put my cherry here, just like so. There we are. We are all set. So we're going to one, two, buck my shoe. And let's hope this does not give me any problems. And it didn't. There we go. Set that to the side. There it goes. All right. So here's that. That and this piece just like that and i'm just going to take this whole paper and stick it back in my case so it does not go missing we are going to finish up this card tag and we are done for today all right so here we go we are going to put now i did not want anything on the back so I am going to glue down my straw just a little bit. That will be glued flat. Okay, just like that. Next, I am going to grab my cherry. My cherry was also glued flat. So just a little glue there. And I'm going to stick it like that, and that will hold it down. Now I'm going to take a couple dimensionals and put it on the bottom of the cherry because I notice that my black adhesive, strawberry, sorry, showed through. <clears throat> and so I put no dimensionals on the green part. And then I'm just going to take a little liquid glue because, you know, we don't want that stuff falling off. Pull that up. And there we go. There is our cute little assortment of fruit on the top of our ice cream cone. Now, this card will fit in a mini slimline envelope or a business size envelope. Or if, so if you put your celebrate straight across like I did on my first, on my sample, it will take a four and a quarter to five and a half inch card to fit uh, envelope. However, if you slant it like so, you can fit it into a small business envelope or what's called a mini slim line. And you want to only put glue on your letters. So when I did this one, you literally glued from the L to the A because your CE hangs off and your TE hangs off. I'm going to do this one more at a diagonal. And so I am going to glue, put glue from the, I think I'll do from the bottom of the E to the T bottom. All right. So bottom of the E and then celebrate. See, this is what I'm talking about, getting glue on all those areas and bottom of the T only. All right, there we go. Then we'll flip it over and we will glue it down. Now, I want my strawberry on top of the L, so I'm going to just lift it. There we go. Set those down and that should be perfect. And that is our second card or tag. And you could, you know, you could put that on the front of a card. That would be cute. So it would be a double interactive card. It could be a gift tag or it can just be a little card on its own. So got a little glue outside of the edges. All right. So celebrate. There's your little cute little tag. There we are. I hope you enjoyed today's projects. Um, uh, let me give you a sneak peek of March Hostess Club. So for March, we will be using the Enduring Beauty Bundle. Now the bundle for Enduring Beauty is $50.75, I believe. But it comes with 
the dies, and the stencils. So this first card that we are doing, this is stencils only. There was no stamping except for the greeting. Okay, this was stencil only. Okay, so that's how beautiful it is, stencil only. And then we are also making this card, and this one is used, partial die cutting. Now, I did use markers to um, color this. However, I believe I've changed my mind, and we will be stenciling using the stencils and blend ink blending the color on. Um, I just feel like it's easier and makes your flowers look so beautiful. I played with several colors yesterday and came to the conclusion that we are definitely stenciling. And then this hello sentiment um, was one of the celebration items last month. And I just stamped a bunch of them and then I cut them out on my scan and cut. So you have a nice um, image. So colors may vary next month or this month. Um, this one happens to be Lemon Lolly, but the paper pack I'm using, you will be able to, and I will have samples of all the other colors, but how beautiful is that? So if you are interested and you are wanting to get this set for next month, if you have not already purchased it, I would strongly encourage you to do so because it is a lot of fun. And like I said, I will be showing you how to do some partial die cutting. Okay, so we only die cut to there. And then I put a die cut on the back so you couldn't see all the ink. So yeah, here we are. This is our, our beautiful uh, card. So I can't wait. And Hostess Club is next weekend. So I will get that host code for March. And March is our last um, month for this session of Hostess Club. And we will resume in June. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you there. Please let me know if you are interested in signing up for another round. And you guys all have a wonderful day. And thank you for watching here at Happy Cards Company.